stay with the issue of uh, power generation in our country, but move away from the pricing for the moment. Remember this, a plan to use those car power ships to solve the electricity crisis has been well, literally left in the dark. Environmental Affairs Minister Barbara Creasy has dismissed its appeal of its license denial. That plan was for these gas powered ships to plug ESCOM's electricity supply gap. So let's get a reaction then from Outer Energy Advisor. I remember speaking to Liz McDade back uh, when this was still a big issue. Back with us this morning from Outer Parliamentary and Energy Advisor. Liz, good to have you back with us on the South African morning. Just take us through uh, how we got to this point and your views of how it's been going. Uh, well, we started off, uh, if you remember, uh, at the end of, I think, uh, 2020, uh, when we when there was a call out that we had to have some short-term power uh, producers that should be basically ready and on the grid by June this year. Then it turned out that Car Power was one of those bidders, and they just got themselves to the front of the queue, uh, and since then it's just uh, deteriorated from there. So the first thing is car power needed to get an environmental authorization and mm. an electricity generation license and a whole lot of other permits. What happened is that they tried to use COVID as an excuse not to do an environmental impact assessment, but the department found them out and said no. Then they went through a process where we, as the wearing the Green Connection, had were very much involved with uh, supporting local fishers to try and participate. That um, was 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 found to be a problem, and we found that things like the noise impact of a 20-year ship in a harbour mm. was not properly assessed. That this was and and when you're talking about you're talking about livelihoods uh, of fishers on the ground, so those livelihoods are at risk, and no assessment was was done, no proper assessment. Then there was a subsequent study that nobody got to comment on, which was handed to the authority after the commenting date, um, which was some reference to something in Ghana. Well, Ghana, for example, is not Ghana. The port of Kruger is not Ghana. Richards Bay is not Ghana. And every port needs to have a proper assessment. So what we have now is that the department under a lot of input from various uh, civil society bodies and small-scale communities said, no, this is not adequate. Mm. And then our power appealed. The department did take a long time, and we now have an 89-page document for each port. Uh, but in the end, the minister has said, no. And it's clear. The process has not been followed. There's been no meaningful consultation and real environmental issues have not been addressed. So from our perspective, it's good news. Car power must go back to the drawing board, but we have to ask the question. This project is predicated on the fact that there would be a 20-year emergency in this country. Right. And, and that for us is a problem. So if they have to come back and now say, no, they're only going to do it for five years or whatever, then the, if they their business case was, well, we'll go for 20 years and we'll get this much money. If they're going to go for five years, then obviously the prices are going to go up. Um, and already they were high. So, so from our perspective, we think car power should just depart. But I also think it raises other issues. So both Outer and Green Connection are taking on the NERSA uh, decision and this is also where we start looking at what is the role of an environmental impact assessment. The impact assessment is not just a tick box exercise. We as humans are dependent on our environment for survival. It's our life support system. So you can't just say, ah, well, it's just one of those things that you must just, you know, go through the motions and it's fine. You can do your so-called development. No, we have to have proper assessments. And now we sit in a climate crisis and we've seen the recent case that in floods, you know, droughts in other places, running out of water here. The, the climate is, change is real. So we cannot just carry on like we did before. Yeah. And when you start looking at these kind of projects and their impact, and then you look at the, the, the project developers or the company that doesn't even bother to do an assessment of how this is going to impact, and there's no mitigation. So from our perspective, 
bye bye car power i think it's it's a very good point because it almost seems in this case uh, that the environmental crisis has outweighed in South Africa uh, the energy crisis for now, which of course everyone uh, will support as far as the environment is concerned. Is there, as I say goodbye to you, Liz, is there anything in these 89-page documents and the environmental impact assessments that car power ship can go back and if they were to come and do it properly uh, and give a proper uh, environmental uh, impact assessment? Is there a way possibly that car power ship would be able to get this right? Is there something they can change uh, in the near future to try and get back into the running for this? I personally don't think so because the 89 pager is damning in terms of the gaps. So it's back to beginning, start over again. But even then, I think there are some fatal flaws in the project that can't really be mitigated. Are you able to give me maybe just one example of that? I've got maybe just another moment with you. Are you able to give me one example of a fatal flaw? Um, where the ships need water to come in, uh, so, you know, to, to cool, cooling water, and the cooling water goes back into the ocean hot. And that mm. is, uh, according to the reports, would have an impact on things like, uh, you know, the fish larva, very small things. And, and, and that would... Um, mean that you're risking a threatened species. The species can't go anywhere. So, uh, and they propose no mitigation and they claim there is no mitigation. So that would be one of those flaws That's that that's quite a big one. That's a very big flaw uh, to have to try and deal with. And I'm sure there will be many of those. Liz, I'm sure we'll speak again in the near future as we unpack more of those flaws. So a win for the environment, it seems, and well done as well, as far as uh, leaving a car power ship with no power uh, to be able to dock their ships here in South Africa. Good